Hey, how's it going, guys? It's me, your Deatho One here, back with another video. This time, I'm going to be bringing you guys a beginner guide for Sid Meier's Civilization Revolution. Uh, this game came out on the 360 a while ago, but it was free not too long ago. And you know, I've seen a lot of traffic on this game. I've seen a lot of people still playing this game, and it seems like a lot of people are still interested in even learning this game that haven't played it before. So I figured, you know what, I'll make a guide on it just because it's a game that I personally enjoy and I can always come back to to play uh, every once in a while just because, you know, it's it's a fun game, really. When it comes down to it, you can play with your friends, you can play online, all this fun stuff. So let's get right into it. So you're going to want to come here to start a new game. Um, when you start the new game, you will be tasked with the difficulty you would like to choose. Personally, if you're just starting out the game... Chieftain is, is, is advisable for you to start out on. If you want to start out on a somewhat difficulty, then you can start on Warlord, but you won't be getting any of the tips or hints or anything like that from it. So if you would like to play the game with those tips and hints and, and stuff like that, play on Chieftain. But if you just want to go right into it and just go by my guide or just try to figure out the game on your own, go Warlord. We're going to go with Chieftain here just so you can see at the beginning and it'll give you tips and everything. So click Chieftain. Now it comes to your civilization selection. You can see there is a whole array of different characters you can choose from. There is, I believe, 15 or something like that. 16, sorry, my bad. Personally, if you're just starting out the game, the ones that I would recommend you to start out with would be the Greeks here, Alexander for the Greeks, Isabella for Spanish, Catherine for the Russians, or Mao for Chinese. These are the four that I would recommend you to start out with because they all have very good all-around stats. They're all easy to play. They don't have have any sort of hard um, factors taken into them. Uh, if you are starting out, though, the, the one that I always start with is the Greeks just simply because they start out with democracy. They have a courthouse. And this allows you to get a lot more uh, science because personally the what I play for in this game is I go for learning I go for the capabilities I go for either the end space goal or just in general being able to have that science to uh, research things that gives you a greater advantage over everybody else if you are starting I recommend Greeks that's what we're gonna choose here okay so you can see once we load it in the game because we're in the chief uh, the easy difficulty the chieftain difficulty you'll come up with this sort of screen here it'll uh ask you if you know how to play or you can already say you know how to play i'm just gonna go great tell me more just so you guys can also see part of the tutorial here too but as you can see you have your city here you start off with a city if you go on chieftain any other difficulty you start out on you have to build your own city and that is just by finding a good spot with resources a good mixture is normally a good thing and then you plant your city down so what we're going to do here is i'm just going to show you the interface to begin with you can see we already have a warrior unit here and you can see there's a couple of actions you can do with this unit you can choose to move this this unit um, you can see this unit only has a move counter of one per turn they can only move one space per turn you can see that we have this defense city button the wait one turn button and then the civilopedia so defending the city this is useful for when you are obviously defending your city you need to have garrison units in your city to protect it from attacks because if you don't have units in your city any enemy unit that walks into the center of your city will capture it and that is the opposite thing of what you want because then your entire city will be gone and they will be overrun and now you won't have control of it anymore. You will lose all production from that city, everything that came from it. And if it is your capital city, then that is one part of a way to get a, the domination victory. But if it is your only city, then you will be out of the game because you do not have a city anymore. Even if you have units left somewhere, once your, cap once your capital city is captured or your last city is captured, you are out of the game. So always make sure you keep units in your city or at least have vision around your city so that you can see when enemies come by, you can bring units back into your city to protect it. So I'm going to hit left bumper. This is going to bring up the screen here that shows you everything about your city, what you can do in that city, and all of this other stuff. So you can see at the top screen, it shows your city name. Uh, right beside the city name, you can see that number two. That means that is your city size, your population size. You'll also see it when you hover over your city. Uh, you can see there is this population growth. There is, which is the apple. You can see that there are there is this hammer for the warrior. You can see on the far right there's that purple mask with the plus four. That is your culture. You can see that there is the plus zero for the beaker and the gold. 
And then you can see there's these five selections on the left side here. Build unit, build building, build wonder, build road, manage workers. This is all kind of some a, a lot to take in right at this beginning, but I'm just going to explain everything right now. So, to begin with, you can see how there are those two apples on the screen. In the top of the screen, you can see how there's the plus two for the apple, and it says population growth in nine turns. So, in order to grow your cities in size, you need to have, you know, the population growth. You need to have that food source. You can see those little guys that are farming in the in the, in the slot down there in the bottom left corner of the screen where the apples are. Each turn, you gain a select number of resources for whatever tile, respective tile that you have your city working on. So you can see how in the bottom left and bottom and top left corner of the screen there are two apple uh, icons and then there are two hammer icons. That means that your city is currently producing two food per turn and two production per turn and the bigger your city gets the more people you have in the city the more tiles you have to work with and the more production you can have so if you see right now do you see how our city <coughs> is a level two that means that we have two tiles of spaces around the city that we can work with if our city was level three that means we would have three tiles around our city that we can work with. Now, in the top right corner, you can see that purple mask. That is your culture. Your culture is directly proportionate to the mindset of your city. So you need to keep your city in an uplifting spirit. Otherwise, anarchy will happen. And if enemy cities are nearby with high culture, they will be tempted to join the enemy city and you will actually lose your city to them that culture plus four you always have to keep your culture either the same or above what your city population is otherwise and your city will have a chance of being taken over from an enemy now you can see the beaker on the screen the beaker and the gold if you press y you can change between gold and science that's what that is so you can either have your city producing gold or you can have a mixture of gold and science or you can have science the golden science will be later on in the game where you can have extra resources and, and duplicates being done and everything like that. But to begin with, um, the science is what allows you to research things in this game. That allows you to advance your city's knowledge base. What you can do here is you can go to your manage workers and you can pre-assign everything so that you can have maximum production for your city, maximum food, maximum gold, maximum science, or you can have it so you can do a custom fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it set on food production so that you can grow your city, and I'm going to have it on science production so that you can start developing knowledge about your city and in further increasing your city survival because you have more knowledge over the other teams. Now, once you have it selected on the food and the science, it will ask you if you hit the research and technology. So if you press on the back button, you can come up to the screen for these commands. You can view cities report, change governments, research new technology, browse the civilopedia, and who is winning. You want to click on research a new technology. Now, what you choose to research depends on what kind of victory you are looking for. You can always consult the tech planner here. That will show you the entire map of every single research that you can do and what you need to research to get to where you want to be. So if you consult the tech planner here, you can see it brings you with this big screen. You can scroll. There's all of these different things that you have to research. And the final thing is future technology. So it depends on what, you were, what your goal is in the game. One key thing to note is that if you are the first to research something in the game, you will gain a bonus based on that research. So if you are the first to research ironworking, you will be granted a legion unit. If you are the first to research masonry in the game, you will get walls built around your capital city for free. And if you're the first to develop mathematics, then you will be the first person, you will get a bonus, and you will be given a catapult for free. So you always want to make sure that you are trying to be the first one to research a technology just so that you can get the added bonus of having it and that is the reason why science is so important in this game because you have all of these things that you have to research to give yourself the edge over every other opponent in the game so you always want to make sure that you are getting some sort of science or some sort of research generally you want to have science over everything else just so you can start researching all of these things so you can have all of those advantages over everybody else and be able to build all of these different things to get all of these different things that other people cannot do let's say you want to build yourself to mathematics 
If you follow the chart backwards, this will tell you everything that you have to research in order to get mathematics. Behind it, you have writing and masonry. Those are highlighted. That means those are prerequisites for getting mathematics. So now you have to backtrack the chart again. So to get writing, you need to have researched the alphabet. And to get masonry, you have to have researched pottery. So that means to get to mathematics, you have to research alphabet and pottery, masonry and writing, and then you can research mathematics. So it's always, it's always you have to research a whole bunch of different things to get to your final goal. And your final goal is always winning, obviously. Now you can see when I highlight alphabet, this tells you every single thing that researching the alphabet unlocks for you. So if you research the alphabet, you will have the ability to research writing, code of law, and literacy. So always consult the tech planner here if you need to know what you want to build. It doesn't take away any time in the game. Uh, your, turn, your turn time doesn't keep counting unless you're playing in an online game. But if you're playing offline, just single player, you can consult this as long as you need and write your plan out. And then it'll ask you again what you want to research. So we're just going to go with alphabet here. Now, the next thing you want to do is you want to start moving your unit around the map so you can explore the map. You can see there is a big, huge map in this in this game. I can't possibly show you all of it right now, it would take too long, but just know that throughout the game you will be exploring the whole map, you will be finding new people, you will be building more cities. Every time you walk around you might encounter a city like this. This is a barbarian city that you can run into. Just attack them. So when it comes to attacking and bonuses and benefits and everything like that, high ground and structures give you bonuses based on your units because you get an environmental bonus when you're attacking. So to attack a unit, you want to first select the unit that you want to attack with. So in this game, there's no such thing as ranges. You just have to be next to the unit. And you can attack in a one block radius around your unit. You just hover over the unit. And then to attack, you just press the A button and it will engage in a combat scenario. You have no control over this scenario. But if you feel like you are going to lose the battle and you don't want to lose your units, you can always retreat mid-battle. Now, because we've captured this barbarian village, you can see that every time you capture a barbarian village, it will give you a bonus. This one gave us the knowledge of pottery. They can also give you, say, a galley, which is a naval unit that you can use to explore around the map in shallow water. Uh, sometimes they'll give you a caravan unit, sometimes they'll give you uh, gold, sometimes they'll show you where a, a secret hidden wonder is nearby. So anytime you see a barbarian village, make sure you take over it, make sure you destroy it so that you can get the knowledge and the bonus that it gives you from doing it. And as you can see, they also showed us where this ancient palace is located. And they always give you a really good bonus, a really good benefit when you find them. So make sure that whenever one is revealed, you try your best to get there. Don't devote all of your resources to getting to it, but if you are able to get to it before anybody else, it all it does is, is give you a, a benefit, so make sure you try to get there when you can. And when you're walking around, eventually, sometimes you will run into a location where it'll ask you to name the place, like this. As you can see, we discovered a forest, so we get some gold, and you can name the forest whatever you want to do. You can enter a customized name if you want. It doesn't matter what the name is. It's just, it's just for fun in the game. Now, you can see this village right here. This is a friendly village so instead of attacking this one you will walk into it and when you walk into it they will give you a bonus a benefit just for finding them so as you can see when we walk into it now they give us a spy okay so I just did a battle against this barbarian village with this warrior and you can see that I lost one unit in the battle and you can see that there is a broken heart beside the unit that means the unit is damaged and it is not at full health not full capacity not full damage not full defense this means that you can either heal this unit which takes one turn to heal for each unit that is lost or you can choose to keep attacking but that is very kind of foolish I would rather not risk the chance of losing this unit so I'm going to heal this unit that is going to take its turn and then you can continue to attack attack the next turn. Okay, so now you can see that we've got this pop-up on the screen saying we have reached the medieval era. New abilities, more great people, abilities, knowledge of democracy. So on the right side, it shows you your current abilities, and on the left side, it shows you what new abilities you got for reaching this era. Now, the way that you reach this era is because of your researching of technology. And now you can see, this is the first contact we have with another civilization in here. And you can see this message we have here. Most noble president, killer for the win. How wonderful to meet you at last. I 
offer you my hand in peace and friendship. Will you accept my generous offer? There are three options here. You can say, yes, let us have peace. This means you are signing a treaty with this person, a virtual treaty, meaning that you guys will not attack each other. You will not try to take over each other's units. You will not do anything of that sort. You can choose, no, this continent belongs to me, which means that saying, no, I don't want peace with you. We are going to fight this war and I'm going to win. Or you can consult with your advisors and they will give you advice on what they think you should do. Now, if you're starting with the Greeks, they have democracy to begin with. That is their starting government. And under democracy, you cannot start a war unless the war is started upon you. Unless the enemy attacks you first, you, and declares war on you, you cannot declare war. So even if I choose, no, this continent belongs to me, they will say, no, we do not agree with this, let's have peace. And you will see this in a second here. As you can see, the people refuse to sanction this unprovoked attack. And the Congress has voted to reverse the decision, so we will be in a peace treaty. And if you wish to talk to the person in the future, you can use the diplomacy panel. One thing to quickly note, though, before I continue is, even though they signed a peace treaty with you, if they have a government that allows them to make their own decisions, they can still walk on your land and capture your units and capture your cities and attack your units and, and buildings and everything like that. So chances are they will turn against you. Enjoy the peace treaty while you have it. But do not expect that peace treaty to stay for the rest of the game because it will not. Now the last thing that I want to show you is changing a government. So you can see there is the ability to change governments and you can choose between all the different governments that you have. There is despotism which means that you rule with absolute power and then we have democracy. Those are the only two governments we have, but there are plenty of other governments that you can choose from. And you can see here the little warning it gives you. If you change governments, it provokes one turn of anarchy, which your city produces nothing during that turn. And then it asks you if you want to change the government. So if you decide to change the government at any time, every civilization except for, I believe, the Indians with Gandhi will have anarchy. And that is a bad thing because obviously, you know, then your production halts. But it's also a very good thing at the same time because sometimes you need to change governments multiple times throughout the game. The government that you use is dependent on what you need at that moment. So democracy is the best for gaining resources for science and gold. This is why we have so much research capabilities because of our democracy. But you can see if I change to despotism, which will give us anarchy for one turn. You can see when I end the turn. Benefit for democracy is a 50% in science and gold production. But again, the downside to that is you can't declare a war on people. Gold, the benefit for gold in this game is simply just for building and rushing things. So as you can see, we have in production a warrior unit right now. It takes three turns, or you can rush it to get it completed this turn for 15 gold. That goes for buildings too, and wonders. So if I was building a wonder, let's say the Great Library, which learns, if you build it, you learn the technology of all other nations. Uh, once someone has completed the wonder, you cannot build that wonder anymore. So you always want to be the first one to build it. Then you can always rush it with gold. Gold is also used for building roads between your cities too. So right now you can see instead of waiting three turns, I will rush it for the 15 gold I have. And now my warrior is complete this turn. So now I have someone defending this city. And then from here on out, it is just playing the game, getting to know it. The only final thing that you need to do is build settlers. When you build settlers though, just keep in mind that building one settler unit takes away one population from your city so that you can start a another city somewhere else. So you're pretty much you're pretty much taking part of your city and relocating it into a different area so that they can then build their own extra cities. So instead of having one city, you're working out of you have two cities. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. I hope you found it useful. I hope I answered a lot of the questions you have about playing this game to begin with. And I hope that if you have any other questions, you can just leave them in the comments below. I will try to get to all the questions that you have. And if you would like someone to play with, if I'm free, uh, I can also hop on this game at any time. Just add me or send me a message. My name is, uh, my username is Killer for the Win on Xbox. I'll leave that on the screen right now and in the comments below. It's always in the comments below. Uh, again, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, favorite, share, and subscribe if you did enjoy. Please check out my friends' channels. Their links will always be in the description below. Keep it real, guys, and I will see you in my next video. Peace.